it's about what we do on the night. So don't worry about what colour the jerseys are. Don't worry about the name on the back of the jerseys. She's Blackburn Rovers, and we'll go to Milton Keynes on the front foot and play positive and ask questions of them and try and win. So, we could possibly start to maybe think about, perhaps consider that we could conceivably start to get a little bit more excited about the possibility that there may be a small but credible chance that we may, and I just only just said may, get promoted. Weather permitting, of course. MK Dons versus Blackburn Rovers. We'll talk about that to build up and much more on today's show. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match preview. This time, counted down to the Easter Monday Classic. They're all classics from here on in as Blackburn Rovers head south to take on uh, AFC Wimbledon. Or is it Wimbledon? Or is it MK Dons? Heck knows. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. That's right, folks. It's another game. They are rapid now as we go into the last, was it two months of the season? In fact, last, what, six weeks of the season? Eight games to go for Blackburn. I think Shrewsbury only have the seven. We'll talk about Shrewsbury in a little bit. Anyway, let's talk about the match uh, itself as we edge closer to kickoff. We'll take place at Stadium MK on Monday, the 2nd of April uh, last season. MK Dons finished 12th this season. They're not doing too good. They're down in 19th spot, battling for relegation. Uh, to avoid relegation so that makes this an extra spicy affair because we are battling at the top they're battling at the bottom everything's up for grabs current top scorer is chucks and he has got 10 goals and the man guiding them at the moment is dan mitchy who took over from robbie nelson I, I think i don't know if there was another manager in between robbie nelson and dan mitchy but anyway he's the man pulling the strings right now now over the years these two sides in their current form and that's the best way to put it in their current form m kid on and blackburn rose have only met four times and it's pretty even. In fact, it's straight down the middle. Blackburn Rovers have won two. And MK Dons have won two. And that's in all competitions and all grounds. Let's take a look at the last couple of appearances at Stadium MK. So we go into this. Never won at Stadium MK. Last two appearances. Or the only two appearances. Uh, the last time that we were there was when MK Dons were in the championship. And we lost 3-0 before that in the League Cup. We lost 2-1, and that was all the way back in August 2012. So let's take a look at my predicted starting 11, first and foremost, for the hosts. Uh, MK Dons, Nichols and Goal, Watton, Lewington, Britton, Williams, Upson, Cissé, Muirhead, Pollitt, Agard, and the top goal scorer, Aniki. And uh, as you can see, they currently have one of our Robes players uh, on the books, uh, on loan, Elliot Ward. So he cannot play, so he's cup-tied. Uh, we'll talk more about Elliot Ward later on. Anyway, let's take a look at the statistics for MK Dons. And uh, the current top goal scorer, like I said at the top of the show, Anike's there with 10 goals. Agard's there with 7. Upson's got 4. And Nesbitt has 4. Into the discipline, Ebanks Landel has 11 yellows. Upson has 10. Anike has 9. And Williams has 8 into the reds. Walsh has 1. Wooden has 1. Anike has 1. And Sal has 1. Into the form book. For MK Dons, they come into this in a pretty good bit of form. They've actually turned their season around, uh, believe it or not, despite their position in the table. They've won uh, three of the last four, and uh, in fact, they are unbeaten in four. So last time out, they took on Gillingham, 29th of March at Gillingham. They won 2-1 before being held by GB's Blackpool at MK at Stadium MK. Uh, all the way back in 17th of March, they uh, MK Dons beat relegation, relegation, relegation strugglers Berry. And all the way back, Tuesday 13th of March, a massive home win up against playoff chasing Rotherham 3-2. And right at the bottom of the screen there, all the way back, 3rd of March, MK Dons lost at home to Bristol Rovers. Now let's take a look at the current state of play uh, in the home form table. If you have a look at the home form table, we're, we're more focusing on MK, uh, Milton Keynes, and where they lie in the table. They are currently ranked 14th at the last eight games uh, in the form book, so uh, they come in there on ab about average, about average. Uh, so this just shows who's, whose home form is more deadly. And right now, Blackburn Rovers are top of the pops, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, in fact, Plymouth are number one. MK Dons are right in the smack in the middle of the table. So 
If Blackburn bring their A game, they should come away with at least a point. Anyway, let's talk about Blackburn Rovers and look at this. I've kind of blamed up the old, uh, the old jerseys here. Uh, just, I don't know. I thought I'd spice it up a bit. Anyway, this is how I feel they will start the match against MK Dons. Ryer in goal, Bennett, Lenehan, Mulgrew, Bell, Dak, Evans, Smallwood, Antonson, Graham and Armstrong up front. Uh, when I look at that, obviously Williams, there's no Williams in there. Uh, I thought Bell had a good game against Bradford and I think it's... It, it's going to be hard to drop him, and there's a lot of players in the in the uh, squad or in extra starting eleven that's that's made a, a they deserve to remain in the squad after the performance against Bradford. Bell's one of them, Antonson's one of them, Evans is another one of them, and I think Elliot Bennett uh, will keep his spot at right back. I don't think I don't know where Naimbi is on the state of play for his fitness, um, but uh, I expect Mulgrew to come back. Uh, Lenehan should come back. If not, and then Mulgrew might push over to the right side of the centre, centre four, and uh, and then Williams will probably occupy the spot which he did against Bradford. And moving forward, there is obviously some uh, arguments that Payne should start ahead of Antonson, Conway, and who else? Samuel. But to be honest with you, this is how I think they will start. Armstrong still got goals in them despite having a having a dull game against Bradford. Uh, Danny Graham. Should come back if he's fit. Dominic Samuel did an okay job, but uh, nothing spectacular. But anyway, that's just my opinion. If you've got your own opinions, whack them down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear how you would, uh, how your starting eleven would look like. Anyway, moving forward, let's take a look at the statistics for Blackburn Rovers. The man leading the line right now is Bradley Dack. He is on fire, 17 goals. Next up is Danny Graham with 15 goals. Uh, who's broken away from uh, Charlie Mulgrew, who's there in third place with 12 goals. Dominic Samuel still. And he's hanging on in there in fourth place with eight goals into the discipline. Richard Smallwood still on nine yellows. I don't know how that's possible. He, he was banging out the yellows. I know it's not a good thing to have multiple yellows. But uh, he was on, he's been on nine yellows for an incredibly long amount of time. I have no idea when was the last time he got a yellow card. But moving down the table, Elliot Bennett's in there in second spot with eight yellows. Corey Evans in there with seven and Williams with six into the reds. Bennett, unfortunately, he's got two reds. Sam has got one, and Travis has won into the form book. This is Blackburn Rovers' last five games, and they've won four out of the last five, so it's pretty decent form. Uh, as for the yeah, we'll have a look at the away form table in just a second. But last time out, they beat uh, Bradford City at Ewood Park 2-0 before beating Gary Bowie's Blackpool 3-0 at Ewood Park as well. In Sandwiched, in between that game, should have been the Gillingham match, uh, where Rovers uh, players and fans made that long trip down south only for the game to get cancelled. Then we took on uh, fellow promotion chasers, Wigan Athletic at Ewood Park, and it was held to a 2 2 draw. We kind of threw, threw away that one. I think, I think if we'd won that one, we'd be playing sailing our way through to the uh, championship. Then down towards the bottom end of the, uh, of, the, of the graphic there, we took on AFC Wimbledon at their place, and it was a monstrous 3-0 away victory. I'm hoping that we can, we can equal, if not better, that one uh, when we take on MK Dons. And right down the bottom of the screen there, we went to Warsaw, and we won 2-1. Let's take a look at the, uh, the current state of play for the last eight matches. And the away form table, Blackburn Rovers are second, so they are in a good, rich uh, away Form. So it's currently behind leaders, table toppers, Wigan Athletic. So that's a good omen for Blackburn. Um, you know, we're going into this in a, in a good bit of away form. And I'm hoping that we can continue that into this game against MK Dons. Now, moving forward, let's take a look at some of the, the key fixtures that are going to take place over the next few days. In fact, we'll go and take a look at the results that happened over Friday and uh, Thursday. So obviously, Blackburn Rovers did beat Bradford City. On Thursday, in front of the Sky Cameras, 2-0. And then Wigan, with the early kickoff against Oldham, actually woke up to see that result, which which was kind of kind of put a bit of a, a sour taste in my mouth. I thought, oh gosh, it's going to be one of those days. But no. Oh my goodness. Keith Hills, Rochdale, did us a true solid. And uh, what a game that was. I was watching that pan out over on Sky Sports News. Um, I think Shrewsbury took the lead, then Rochdale, um, and brought it back level. And I think uh, there was then, then obviously Rochdale took the lead 2-1 before a last, like towards the back end of that game, there was a penalty call for Shrewsbury. I got called, everything I was destined. I was thinking, okay, so they're not going to get, the, the, you know, Shrewsbury are not going to lose, and they'll only get a point. Uh, but I, and, and but fortunately, 
A penalty would, didn't even take place. They got over, overturned. And then from that, resulting from that corner, uh, Shrewsbury piled in there. Goalkeeper went up. And Rochdale made the breakaway and wrapped up the three points. And that is a massive victory for not only for Rochdale, but for us at the top of the table. Now the gap is one point. We do have one game in hand now on, uh, on Shrewsbury. So uh, hopefully, let's take a look at actually this coming weekend's matches. Hopefully after this uh, set of fixtures... Uh, it might look a little bit more rosy for Blackburn. But, hey, job's not done yet. Far from it. Anyway, the games that are coming to play taking place on Easter Monday and into Tuesday are like this. Shrewsbury take on Oxford, who are... They are in 17th place, so they are struggling at the moment. So they would want to get themselves out of that sort of area because they are looking... Uh, staring at relegation trouble at the minute. They have played one game less than a lot of teams down below, but they need a, a couple wins to get themselves clear and safe. But the real game and the real test uh, of metal is down at Fratton Park. I think this could be a real, uh, an interesting game. Obviously, Cook, manager of Wigan, used to manage at Pompey. Um, and Pompey are still considering themselves playoff chasers. I think if they win... Uh, against Wigan, they will be right back in the thick of things. If they lose, it could probably be game over in regards to their playoff aspirations. So I'm hoping that that Portsmouth can at least take a point off Wigan, which would make the top two even more spicy than it is. And obviously we take on MK Dons. Also in the mix, let's have a look at some of the other fixtures that are going to take place. Uh, Rotherham, they're still trying to fight for um, their playoff dreams. They are uh, against Charlton away from home and where's Scunthorpe? Scunthorpe take on Plymouth. That's probably the tie of the round. That is sixth against fifth. Those two um, are on the verge of, of playoffs. They just need a win would give themselves a bit of breathing space with the chasing pack. Let's take a look about the run-ins now. It's first and foremost the leaders which are unfortunately Wigan. They have uh, what is it? Two, four, six, eight, ten games remaining. No they don't. They have nine. They've played one of them. Uh, and I've read, I've, I've yellow circled ones that I feel that could be potential banana skins. Obviously, the Portsmouth form, we talked about that already. Uh, Wigan against M MK Dons. It's the same sort of deal um, for us. It's going to be a banana skin no matter what because they are scrapping for their lives at the bottom of the table. So are Rochdale and they gave Shrewsbury a run for the money. And it's at Rochdale, Spotlands. So it could be another massive uh, game for them and also for Wigan and right towards the end of the season we're going to be taking on AFC Wimbledon and they are right now scrapping for their lives but that could be null and void at that point Wigan I mean Wimbledon could already be relegated Wigan could already be promoted um, so we, we shall see how the rest of the season pans out as for Blackburn Rovers I've yellow circled the three ones that I feel are going to be real strugglers for Blackburn obviously the MK Dons game is the banana skin in my eyes it's a long trip uh, for the Rovers it's not too bad, I guess. Well, no, it, it's, it's still pretty bad. It's still, still a long trip for Rovers, and they are scrapping for their teeth down there. Then further down towards the back end of the season, up against Peterborough, who are battling for playoff uh, spots, and then also Charlton in the same boat as we would go down to the Valley for that one. As for Shrewsbury, they also have a league uh, trophy final where they take on Scott Wharton and his boys at Lincoln City. Uh, three potential banana skins for them. I would, I would also consider the Oxford game a bit of a struggle, but um, we, we should see. We just want to see how they respond to that Rochdale game. Anyway, they take on Bradford City at Valley Parade. They'll take on Charlton at their own place, and they'll take on Peterborough at their own place as well. And they also have to take on MK Dons on the last game of the season, where it could be uh, win or bust for MK Dons. They also take on Berry, but I think they are doomed. So you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say about the match. What did the gaffer have to say in an extended? Talking heads shortly after the final whistle against Bradford City. Well, not, I've got no fears about the, the depth of the squad and the quality of the players that um, that we've got that chomping at the bit really sitting on that bench. It's every every week when I pick an eleven, it's difficult to um, to explain to the other players who are not playing why why they're not actually starting. And yet there's normally a logic behind why we want to play. You know, tonight was Antonis, and you know, instead of a Conway or a or a Payne, it was um, there's, there's a reason and a logic behind it. I think, and, and the good thing for me is, as I've talked during the week about the the quality of the human beings in our, this squad, they they won't like it necessarily, but they take it and accept it and uh, support the players that start the game. And so, yeah, happy enough with that. Well, you hope so, don't you? But you also have, have 
been involved in the scenario where you feel as if you deserve to be two or three goals up and then you lose a goal and you find yourselves one nil down and um, thankfully that wasn't the case tonight thankfully we did eventually break them down and, and, and take a chance and um, standing here now two nil feels about right I think on the balance of play I don't think you know I, I felt any real threat from them for a lot of the game I thought defensively we were really strong tonight which um, I'm pleased for, for Amari, I'm pleased for Derek who, who had to fill in on that position for, for Charlie and, and I'm sure he, like he's played there all his life really, I know he's been left back since the day I walked in the building here but he showed he was very composed at left centre half tonight. Um, yeah, listen, it was. it's just another game that we have to tick off, I think there's no complacency about it, it was tough and we expect every game to be tough. Uh, everybody's in this league at the moment because of the balance of it seems to be playing for something whether it's to stay away from the bottom get out of the bottom or try and sneak into the playoff positions so um yeah happy the points in the bag and we tick that one off and move on to milton Keynes. yeah i think so because I think, like any team when it's only one they are piling men forward they're putting the ball in the box we, you know we had made some changes that we were taught respect to craig and to jack payne they're not six foot three and they weren't going to help us on set plays and, and free kicks and so it's something we talked about about trying to deny opportunities for corners and for wide free kicks and I think we did that pretty well tonight kept them away from our goal for long spells but um, Craig, Craig's one of those players I'm talking about a fantastic human being who's chomping at the bit and gets really frustrated if he's not selected to start and yet um, tonight we will we, 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 the team to try and score goals against the back three that ultimately in that first 25 minutes Simon changed it from a back three to a back four because we could have scored quite a few goals in that first spell but um, that's that's football um, that was the logic behind the selection and when Craig understands that and uh, as I said he's a great guy and when he's been asked to come on and, and make a difference he does he scores a goal he's done that once or twice before he did against Portsmouth out here and finished the game off for us as well so I would never question Conway's um, desire to help this team win games. Of course, it's um, but again, you have to trust all your players. That's the squad. I, I do become repetitive, telling them that everybody has to work hard in training. Everybody, if you haven't played, you have to do the extra work, the extra running. Unfortunately, so that when you're asked to to play, you have to perform. I, I'm not. No manager's got time for a, a, a lad telling you that he hasn't played for six weeks and he was a bit blowing. You know, it was a bit hard. That's why you have to train hard every day, and so that when your chance comes and your opportunity comes, you've got to try and grab it. Yeah, but they've won three of the last four, I think. Have they won again tonight? They've won two previously, and um, listen, they'll be their tails will be up, their confidence will be high. And uh, th what I think about them is they're a football team. They'll ask questions, they pass the ball around. They've got some decent players, and um, it's just the next test for us, really. I keep saying to my team, it's. It's about what we do on the night. Don't worry about what colour the jerseys are. Don't worry about the name on the back of the jerseys. This is Blackburn Rovers and we'll go to Milton Keynes on the front foot and play positive and ask questions of them and try and win. Well, first and foremost, he's a big loss to the team because he's since he's come back in the team, he's been a man mountain really. He just looks so fast and powerful and confident and uh, he's taking a knee in the lower back. Um, I think it's just bruising. I think it's just uh, he, he'd be fine, I, I hope, but let's wait and see how it settles down. Sometimes they can be really numbing and sore and restrictive, and yet in a day or two, and hopefully it'll be fine. Never close when I got the text saying that he was starting the game in um, in Hungary. You know, I, I had, had a conversation with the management at Scotland, and, and to be fair, they, they initially said that they were going to be sympathetic to us, that we were playing on a Thursday night, and yet they had some injuries and fallouts and felt that he had to play the second game. They obviously lost the first game, which put a little bit more pressure on them to try and get a result. And so, well, as soon as I saw he was playing his second 90 minutes in, in a short period of time, and we've got two games coming up in a short period of time, he couldn't play. It. Uh, he got back at half past three into Edinburgh Airport and had no sleep, tried to get up here. It's just we hadn't done any training sessions with us, and it was just a nuisance wasn't happening, he wasn't going to play because he'd done none of the preparation. Now you've heard a little bit what the gaffer said to say, you've heard a little bit what I've had to say. What's been going on on social media? Well, to be honest with you, not much. I've got a couple bits for you for there, but most of the comments are taking place at the BIFCS forum. If you've not checked out the forum, make sure you do so. There is a link in the description below. Anyway, AJW said this, Shrew's result worked in our favour today, but let's heed some caution here. MK Dons are on a good run at the moment. That game is more difficult now than it was, say, two or three weeks ago. Shrews are at home to Oxford, I think. Things could do a 180 come Monday. Blue Boy 333, Rochdale did us a turn today. It would be nice to return the favour 
and BMK FGS 5635. Absolute worst case scenario. I can't see Shrews doing better than five wins and two draws in their last seven. If they do, that's 17 points, meaning we need 16 from our last eight games. Five wins, one draw, two defeats gets us that. I just can't see us not getting that. As for Husky, he said this, the Shrews have gone. I thought they might struggle with their player suspension and also that one-off injured today added to that. It's just a pity Wigan had a string of easy games losing after losing the FA Cup. Or we'd be favourites to finish top. Had enough, said this. Just got to keep winning and keep the pressure on the other two. And who knows what could happen after Monday. We have two games before Shrewsbury play again. We have not got to give them any hope. I think they may start preparing for the playoffs by resting some. Alan K. Wow. Been out all day. Just seen the Shrewsbury result. Getting nervously excited now. Boa Vista said this. Rochdale based Rover. Shrews were shit today. As were Dale first half. Manic last two minutes. Could have been 2-2. But 3-1 indeed. Jack O'Nori said this. First time this season I've been confident of automatic promotion. It's ours to lose now. Over on the book of face. Clear Ive Jennings said this. Nine games to go for Wigan. Eight for Blackburn and seven for Shrewsbury. And the automatic promotion places are apparently a given. Seriously? You would be a fool to think such. Not only by a long shot yet. Each side will drop points before now in the end of the season. And the top three will win all the remaining games. I'm not sure... Uh, who he supports, but that was on one of the, the Facebook pages. Anyway, Jonathan Hushmind from the One Jack Walker page said, Thank you, Rochdale. Massive one Monday. Now down at MK Dons. Come on, Rovers! That's pretty much all there is out there. If you have got your own comments leading up to the game, again, smash them down in the comments section below. I will gladly read them uh, at the review, at the review phase. Now, over the years, the number of players have played for both Blackburn Rovers and MK Dons, and we're just talking about MK Dons. We're not talking about the uh, the Wimbledon team before the MK Dons. Man, that gives me a headache. Anyway, Keith Andrews, that's right. He was an MK Dons player way back when, and he was also a Blackburn Rovers player. Didn't really, wasn't one of my favourites to be honest with you. But looking back on it, uh, he was probably fits in the in the Richard Smallwood, Jason Lowe kind of role, kind of guy who does a lot of donkey work, doesn't get much credit. But anyway, he was both an MK Dot and a Rover. Now, let's take a look about this. The current state of play in the defensive quarters of both MK Dons and Blackburn Rovers. Paul Downing, that's right. Started the season as an MK Dons player. He's now a Blackburn Rovers player. He came in on loan, but now it's a permanent deal. He's ours now, baby. And on the other side of the coin, Elliot Ward started the season as a Blackburn Rovers player. He's now on the books at MK Dons on loan. But please, please, don't bother sending him back. Well, you heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. You've heard what the fans have been saying about the match. You've even had a word from the gaffer. In fact, forget all of it. Completely put it in the back of your minds because what really matters is what Cast the Cat thinks will happen between MK Dons and Blackburn Rovers. <laughs> That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Okay, this game is no more important as the last game, and it's no more important than the next game. We've just got to keep on winning. We've, we've been given a massive boost uh, prior to this game, obviously with the Rochdale result against Shrewsbury. It gives us a one-point cushion over Shrewsbury and a game in hand. Now, let's just do a quick bit of uh, uh, fortune telling and, and let's just try and look into the future a little bit. If, let's just say if, Blackburn Rovers pick up the three points against MK Dons and then Shrewsbury stumble against Oxford, that would be a four point lead with a game in hand. Now that is a very, very tempting scenario and something that really appeals to me. It does give us a bit of breathing space, a little bit of wiggle room and then basically the gap will be opening up and then hopefully the mental wheels will go off Shrewsbury and then we could actually break away and hopefully get get automatic promotion secured early doors. But first and foremost, we've got to be MK Dons at their place. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. 
But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.